So this is the Lotus Guide magazine and today we're going to be introducing and interviewing Dr. Jacob Lieberman. Dr. Jacob Lieberman has a doctorate in ophthalmology or optometry and a PhD in vision science. He also has an honorary doctorate of science for his pioneering work with light and color. His search for a new model of wellness has led him to the use of vision exercises and color to assist his patients. He has helped thousands of people worldwide to see in a whole new way. So, Dr. Lieberman, when you say there's more to vision than meets the eye, what are you really saying? That's a huge question, so let me give a huge answer. First of all, we don't see with the eye. And ultimately, we don't even see with the mind. There is something that observes the activity of the body and simultaneously observes the, the activity going on in what we call mind. Ultimately, that is the final set of eyes. That is the place from where seeing originates. The amount of seeing that occurs is directly related to where the, which point the observer identifies seeing with. Are they seeing with the eye that has limitations of the, um, that will limit the viewer to the construction of the perceptual apparatus. Are they limited to the mind? Then the viewer is limited to what the mind believes is true and not true, what it agrees with or doesn't agree with. Or are they identified with this noticer, this which is aware of what's happening in the mind and in the body, this particular point of observation, which is not a point, it's hard to talk about this, so I hope you can hear what I can't say. The, this particular place or identification with has no point of view. It's not limited by time and space. Now, having said that, so we don't think that I'm getting too esoteric, let's go back. 35 years ago, I wore glasses for nine years. I started doing some vision training on myself, which at the time I thought was like vision exercising. I kept reducing my prescription as I did this, gradually reducing my, my dependency on my glasses. One day I went into meditation I had a very profound experience. Without going into great depth on that experience, I came out of the meditation, my eyesight was clear. I went to my office, I checked myself on repeated eye charts, and could conclusively tell you that I was seeing 300% better than when I entered my meditation an hour prior. I then examined my eyes in the same way I would for my patients, except I could not see what the lens power was in the instrument, because I was actually behind it, asking myself the question I would normally answer the patient, you know, ask the patient, is it better this way or this way? When I came to what looked like the lens that gave me the best visual acuity, I came out from behind the device thinking the device would say zero, no prescription, even though I was totally led to believe that this was impossible. This was never discussed. This wasn't anything that science even recognized. I came out from behind my device. I looked at the instrument, and the instrument basically gives me the precise prescription I'm wearing in my glasses. In other words, <coughs> something happened that catalyzed the 300% improvement in eyesight with no change in the optics of the eyes. Now I have to question, what is that? What happened? How did it happen? And perhaps most importantly, 
who or what is seeing me. Because what that led me to realize is vision may be catalyzed by an interaction of light and the eye, but it's not occurring in the eye. In fact, my sense was that it's not even occurring in the brain, that there's something out. It's now 35 years later. I have never had a pair of glasses on my face since that day. I have never done any vision training since that day. What I'm sharing with you is that this single epiphany changed things permanently without any repetition, without any practice, without any maintenance, without any of that. So what I realized is that the brain, the mind, consciousness is very plastic, it's very flexible. Now it's a well-known thing. We now call it neuroplasticity. 35 years ago, who even knew about these kinds of things? So as a function of that, I had a direct experience that allowed me to realize that what is seen is different than what we think is seen. And then I started to notice that I began to see things that the average person wasn't able to see. That what, we, what became obvious to me were aspects of seeing that were outside of the normal realm. One of the things I did, for instance, I, is I had a friend check me to see, um, took me into a laboratory and started showing me portions of the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, we know that the average person, that vision uh, is, or, or light is the portion of the electromagnetic spectrum between what we call 400 and 700 nanometers. That's usually the extent of what we can identify or see. When I did it on myself, I was able to go well into the ultraviolet and well into the infrared, which means that my capacity to detect and respond to something subtler that is typically not available to the human eye was there. Since that time, I have begun to notice many other things that perhaps sometimes you could say are invisible to many. I remember Jonathan Swift said, real vision is the ability to see the invisible. So I've had a profound transformation in the seeing mechanism, in my sense of what it is that is seeing, and that has given me some steps up on how to assist people. And the, the system that I developed, this i vision training system, which is a vision training device, was a way to allow the user to experience something about seeing without effort. Even though like it looks like an exercise device, it's totally different than that. So the whole idea was, could I create something that would allow people to experiment with tapping into the maximum potential of what it means as a human being to see? Yeah, you know, a lot of what you're talking about, I, I'm seeing in different aspects of life. And it seems like we, as a, not only as a people, but as a planet, it seems like we are evolving into different frequencies. And with this evolution, I think we're going to get information. And it's interesting, a person like you that has an academic background can get this information and transmit it back out to where people can understand it a little bit and actually use it for their own enhancement, in this case, vision. You know, uh, <clears throat> my brand of science is common sense. The science remains in a language that is not understandable to the lay person, then it doesn't really 
it's not achieving its maximum use. Right. If, however, science merely supports or affirms our direct experience, then it can be of incredible use. So, for me, it's always been about how do you translate science into a new common sense so that every listener can say, oh, I know that. I've had that experience. And it's very, very important that that translation into everyday humanness and humanity take place. And so that has always been um, something that has come natural for me. How to translate either the science or even the subtle realms, if you will, into something that is just understandable so that when we communicate with each other, we're all the same height. Right. So what, what would you say to the person that says, seeing clearly is a physical function determined by the shape of our eyes only and vision improvement is impossible, which is exactly what my optometrist told me when he gave me glasses. <laughs> 